Hello, today I'm going to show you how to put in a concealed or invisible zip. You will need your fabric and the zip. I always like to test these beforehand to make sure I'm happy that it flows up and down okay. And that is a concealed zip. And that is the back. You will need a zipper foot or a piping foot and you will need a concealed zipper foot. Now for universal machines you can get little separate ones like that that just clip on to your foot depending on what kind of foot you have. First thing you need to do Now, I put in these concealed zips in a slightly different way than is described on many pattern books or the commercial way of doing it. Imagine that we're putting a zip in the back of a skirt. If these are your two centre back panels, this is where your waistband would go and this is the centre back seam. It's fun fabric here. Some patterns tell you to put the whole skirt together and then you can do a fitting and you can adjust it at the back. But I don't like to do that. I like to make a twirl, make sure my skirt fits absolutely perfectly and then I cut it out in the important fabric. So before you put anything together at all, you put the two back panels together. This is how I like to do it and it is so much easier and quicker and much more accurate. So if this is my centre back seam where my zip is going to go, right sides together and we're going to sew down here. Now normally I don't pin at all but some people are more comfortable with pinning so I would stick in a few pins whichever way you're comfortable with putting pins in. Sometimes I put them in this way, whoops, sometimes I put them in that way, or you can put them in this way. It all depends on what you're comfortable in. Now, tip number two, this line should be on the longest stitch of your machine. If your skirt is very, very long, then you probably only want to do this much of the long stitch and then you can change the stitch length on your machine from here onwards to the bottom of your skirt. And so just to remind myself where to change I'm going to do it just beyond the zip and I'm going to put in two pins so I know where to change from a long stitch into the normal stitch that I like to use and you just have to imagine the rest of the skirt goes off to the right. I shall stitch that, I shall press it open and then I shall come back. Great, so there you can see I've sewn down the centre back seam. For the purposes of demonstration I'm using the wrong colour thread. So you can see the basting stitch is about that long and then my normal stitch carries on imagining that the rest of the skirt is to the right. On the reverse I've used cream but ordinarily I would pick a zip the correct colour it's close enough and obviously thread the right colour. So I've sewn down here I have pressed it open Okay, so imagining that the waistline is here and the hem is somewhere down there and here is my basting, I'm going to put the zip here and I'm going to pin it. Now I want my zip to be just down a little bit from the top. You can judge where you want, depending on the kind of waistband that you put in. 
I'm going to put mine about there. So the zip has to sit exactly in the middle. And I twist my body to have a look underneath at what's going on. This line, can you see right in the centre of the zip, needs to be exactly on the top of your seam line. So if you've sewn a really good seam and your seam allowances are parallel, then you can pretty much guess by putting your zip in exactly the middle with the same amount of space on both sides. Now I want a hard table and I always like to pin all the way through to the table. That's just me. This is a purpose-built bit of MDF for my workbench. So just looking underneath, making sure the centre of the zip is down the centre of the seam. And I'm pinning all the way through just to make my life easier that way. And I just double check that's in the right place. And I'm going to guess the rest. Now, we obviously don't want it to be all the way through because we're not going to machine the whole way through. I like to do it like that just to make sure it's nice and flat and secure. And I'll pin the other way as well. Turn it round. When you pin, always pin with the fabric on this side if you're right-handed, pinning in this direction. Because then when you put it into the machine, your pins, you can pull them out easily as you're sewing along. Right. Get all these pins in. Now, obviously you're not going to be sewing the whole way through and it's caught the whole way through. So now we're happy that it's all nice and flat. So now I'm just going to lift this bit, the seam allowance, take out the pin and put it back straight in so that I know it's nice and flat. Same with this one. I'm just feeling underneath the pin coming out and going back in. Coming out and going back in. So now it's just pinning on the seam allowance. Turn it round and do the same with these pins. Now you're going to use another basting stitch on your machine. So choosing the long stitch and with the zipper foot so down here and the same up this way. I'll see if I can take the camera to the machine. Mind here, the little zip pull, you don't want to sew it with it over to one side, otherwise you'll break your needle. So either try and pull it up or tuck it in. So I'm just going to put that pin in there so I know that the little zip pull is tucked away. I'm going to go and sew that on the machine and then come back. So there we go, the zip is just tacked in, cut off the little bits of thread. I like to be neat as I go along. Right, so now we've done that. We still can't get in. So what we do now is undo all those basting stitches that you've put in. And because they're nice and long, they're very easy to take out. Lots of people have different ways of taking out their basting stitches. I always say there's more than one way to do the same thing. I'm going to cut one of these large ones down here at the bottom. So I can 
can see that. I guess I should have sewn in black on both sides. I never like to use a quick on pick. They're very dangerous. You can whiz through a seam and carry on and whiz through the fabric. I like to use either pair of scissors like I'm doing. Oh, I just use a pin. Don't know if you can see that there. Sometimes when you get a long enough bit, just give it a pull and out it comes. Make sure you'll take the other bit off as well. So now, the zip is just basted in and it looks like that. So we open it up, all the way down to the bottom, and now we're going to get our zipper foot and we're going to sew the zip. See how it has a little curl on it? I don't know if you can see that. What we want to try and do is get the needle to go in that groove, in this groove here. If you sew with your zipper foot there, I don't know if you can see there's enough light to see that, then it will show on this side, it'll end up looking like that. And we want it to be really, really tucked in. I will show you when we get to the machine. So I've now put my zipper foot on. And you can see I've been using black on the top and white on the bottom so that you can see what's going on. I just need to get the thread. Perhaps I should show you the zipper foot up close again. This is the little zipper foot. And it's got these grooves underneath and it clips on quite easily. There we go. And you can do a little stitch. This is how you normally pull in the bobbin thread from underneath. But effectively it's the same thing. Here was our zip that we've basted in. Undo it. Let's do this side first. Right, so now where these two little grooves go, if I point with a pen, this is the groove on the left and that's the groove on the right. What we want to try and do is open this up, like I was saying before, and put it inside the first groove. Now, as I said, sometimes you can just stitch like that, but it just it won't get close enough, and sometimes you can stitch the actual bit of zip in, which we obviously don't want to do. So let's just get going, and then you can see how this little bit works. Now don't forget to put your stitch length back to normal, which I sometimes forget to do. Just going to add a couple of stitches. And then let's see. Can you see that working? Hold it down. It's quite difficult with the camera between me and the machine. Hold it down. Also keeping this taut as well because we don't want to do that. So holding it down with my right finger, so I want it to roll. Do you see how it could roll back up? Tricky when you get down to the bottom. We'll work on that. So rolling it back out, making sure this is all nice and tight. And then just go down the 
kind of it's difficult to roll the last bit. But just go down to as far as the foot will allow and then back a couple of stitches. And as it comes, cut the thread and now just check all the way along just to see that nothing's been caught. It's a bit bumpy up there, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Now, because zips, concealed zips, are a little bit temperamental, you don't want to have this going on. You don't want to leave that lying about the place. So I pull them through. Because I've got different colour threads, you can see that really easily. Just pull that through to that side. Okay, so now we're going to do the other side. And it feels really weird to have all the fabric on the wrong side of the foot. So you can start from the other end, but you get closer to the bottom if you start at the top. So again, I'm just going to... Well, in fact, I don't need to roll it just yet. I'm just going to go backwards, a couple of stitches, and then on I go. And you notice that I've put the zip in the right-hand groove. And now I've got to press it with my left finger and pulling, making sure the fabric is all nice and straight and flat. So rolling it slightly as I go. easier to do it like this without the rest of the skirt attached. Where have I got to? And it's difficult to roll at the very, very end. Try, try, try. Now here, rather than just letting it go, I just pull it ever so slightly away from the foot. So just in case it's rolled underneath the needle. anything because if you've caught even just one tiny tiny bit it could break the zip as you try and open it up close it rather up and down all right let's pull that through now let's see what it looks like how much the camera's going to show of our closed zip oh. as i say they're quite temperamental Hello. It's hidden. It's good, is it? It's all beautiful. So if I pull it, pull it, pull it, you can just see. But you're not going to get it much closer than that. The other reason why it's really good to do it this way is if you have any pattern matching. I haven't bothered to pattern match. But if you have any pattern matching, you'd be able to pattern match it far more easily. Right. So now we've got this rather horrible hole which we need to sort out. And this is a bit fiddly. So we're going to take this foot off. Where's the back of my... Take that foot off. Put the piping or zipper foot back on. I need to move mine over. Now on this side, this is where we need to get in some clever bit of pinning. Basically what's happened is you've now got a gap. In the, do you see the bottom of the stitch, the stitching line that's stitched the zip on, and the beginning of where our regular stitch for the rest of the skirt centre back seam is. So we've got quite a big gap on that side. And a decent gap from there to there on that side. So do you see here where we've got the original basting line? that was ironed out. This is where we want to stitch, ideally. But to get in there, it's quite tricky when you've got the bulk of the zip. So what I do, and I don't know what other people do, but I pin these seam allowances back again. Absolutely one on top of the other. You can see I'm not swiveling it. I'm going exactly one on top of the other. And then I know 
know. That I'm not going to sew with a bit of squiff in it. It's a technical term. Right. So here, this is the bottom of this side. And where is the bottom of the other side? It's exactly the same place, which is great. Sorry. Need to see that. So what we're going to do is sew from one end to the other. And I've got my needle on the wrong side. There we go. Move my threads over. And you can always hand stitch this last bit. Sometimes that's easier. So that's where the bottom of the line ends. So I'm just going to try and get as close as I can. Quite tricky. Go back a couple of stitches. That'll do. And now I'm going to keep going. If your zip is really really long and you only want it shorter cut it now don't do don't tack it in or baste it in the whole way down otherwise you're going to have this problem the whole way down stop where you want your opening to stop or it'll be a little bit beyond the opening i suppose because your opening will come to there anyway let's carry on try and get this as close to the original basting line as possible stitches over the top. So now I think you can just see a tiny bit wriggly but it's close enough. Yeah you can just see And on the other side too. So now we want to give it a bit of a press and uh, have a look at it. So there you have it, one concealable zip. Open. Closed. If you're going to line your skirt, you can bring your lining, excuse the threads, for example if this was the lining, you just bring your lining up to about there and slip stitch it down next to the zip. If you're not lining it, you may want to overlock this edge all the way down and all the way down before you put your zip in, probably be easier. Anyway, there we go. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, you can see the address below.